what you do. So what you do, apart from just the title, just tell us how an average day um, looks like for you. Based mm-hmm. on your- All right. Great, great. All right. So, um, so f- first of all, Charles, thanks for this opportunity. Thank you very much. I'm, I, I'm very privileged. <laughs> Thank you, sir. All right. So I, I can start, right? Yes, sir. Um, so, so hello, everyone. My name is Emenike Ezekwesele. I'm a pharmacist by training, and I currently work for Nestle Canada. I lead Salesforce Excellence, and that makes me responsible for ensuring that the entire sales team is top-notch, is world-class, is effective in performance in driving our commercial objective for the organization. Um, how my typical day looks. So I wake up, well, um, with the lockdown, I don't wake up very early, but um, usually by six, I'm up, um, do my personal devotion, and then I distribute to my family before we go into breakfast and get ready for work. So usually by eight, I'm at my um, work desk, um, and in the course of my day, I get to have meetings with teams. Um, I do a lot of analytics, you know, of performance to ensure that everyone is doing well, ensure the tools are effective. Um, I have a lot of meetings. By virtue of my role, I get to do a lot of meetings, you know, with the leadership, with um, cross-country partners, you know, across Europe and America. And so it gets quite busy uh, before you know what's happening. It's um, it's um, the day's done. So it's largely now um, working from home, as is the case. But um, I get to interact with a lot of people across the day, I mean, all through the day. And, and yeah, so it gets quite busy, you know, yeah. Did I close my day about six, thereabouts, and then I do some more gisting and stuff. Yeah. And that's how my day goes. <laughs> uh, very good, sir. Um, uh, so uh, at least I'll follow, I followed you on LinkedIn. So I, okay. I have an idea of how um, your career path has been for mm-hmm. a few years now. So, but yeah. look at how you have grown from where you were, even in Nigeria, mm-hmm. before um, looking mm-hmm. to Canada. How, mm-hmm. how would you say tertiary education has contributed, or education generally, how has it contributed to your career growth? Oh, wow. Okay. So, uh, I, like I said, I'm a pharmacist. My first degree was pharmacy at the University of Nigeria, Osaka campus. I also have an MBA um, with the National Open University of Nigeria. And in no small measure, it has contributed to my being effective today. For one, apart from the fact that it gives you the knowledge, right? You get to study things and learn. It has shaped the way I perceive life generally. It has shaped the way I analyze things generally, because as a core part of your education, you do a bit of research, a lot of interaction with other intellectuals, and it shapes the way you see things. It shapes the way you analyze world events. It shapes the way you analyze life. It shapes the way you think. It shapes the way you appreciate things going on around you. It's, I find out that I approach things differently as compared to people I know who are not educated. You know, my perception of things when an event happens, how I see it tends to be different. It's a bit more, as they say, enlightened, you know. And so it's even in my work, you know, when I get to look at data, when I get to look at performance, when I get to discuss with people, the way I listen and understand is totally different. I mean, we all have friends who, for one reason or the other, choose not to go to school or get got to stop at a particular point. You get to see that the perception of things they have is different from the way you will see those same things. And you tend to be more objective in the way you analyze things. You tend to be more, uh, you tend to work more with data, with the information you have, and not just hearsay, and not just assumptions. You know, but you, you tend to want to put stuff together and say, okay, if this and this and this has happened, based on my experience as, an, as, a, as a mini researcher while in the school, because everybody who has gone through the university or a college of education or a polytechnic has done some form of research, you know, and so those things unconsciously shape the way you see things. And I think, in my own opinion, that there's a lot more stability or there can be a lot more stability because of the way people see things. And education has a big part. For me, it has it just helped me think differently. It's helped me think more objectively. It's helped me think more rationally. And how you think affects the decisions you make. 
So there's a likelihood that you're going to make more sensible decisions because your brain has become wired to be a mm-hmm. bit more analytical, you know, because of just going through university, you know, and, and, and so it's, it's been, it's, 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 it's helped the way I think, it's changed the way I think, it's shaped the way I think. Sometimes I think about decisions I made before I went to the university and afterwards, and I'm like, gosh, what were you thinking? <laughs> <laughs> I could have done this kind of things, you know. Yeah, so it's it's a, it's affected, and I think for me the biggest impact has been my thought process. Beyond the knowledge we got, the thought process has been affected seriously. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm looking at you know education, uh, Nigeria. Um, mm-hmm. I'm sure the time you went through school, technology the way it is now was different. Um, yeah. So, but when you were in school, how was it used officially by the school? And even you as an individual, mm-hmm. how, how did you leverage technology, ensuring that you get the best out of your tertiary education? Okay. Um, so, incidentally, I, I went to university in the 90s. So, um, candidly, we didn't, I didn't have much of technology to work with. And it was a big challenge. Well, we survived it, but sometimes I wonder how we survived it. You know, I began to leverage technology more towards my fourth and fifth year in pharmacy school, where, you know, the department brought in some computers and we began to, you know, we were able to, for instance, my project was one of the, uh, was one of the few things I did with technology, you know, and I, I wondered how we coped in those days without technology as much as we have it now, you know, so we didn't, we didn't leverage it much. The school, I, I wish it were better, but the school as of then um, was not as advanced as it is now. And so we didn't, beyond a few offices that had those infrastructure, you know, most of us did. So a lot of what we did was by hand, was hard, you know, and, you know, it was difficult. If, if we think about it compared to today, one of the beautiful things about technology is the fact that research is a whole lot easier with technology. You're able to, to ac- you have more access to data, to information, to research tools now. You have more access to analytical tools compared to what we had then. You have more access to communicating with other people, like not just in your school now, but across the world. Oh, very you true, sir. And, and, and you can cross-pollinate ideas. Now, research can be a whole lot more robust than what it was 20 years ago. You know, you're able to meet people that, I mean, in the course of my, my school work in research, in, 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 in university, all I had was my classmates. But now, my kid, who is in elementary school, does, shares ideas with his friends across the country at that age. And that's because of technology. You know, now they're all schooling from home. They're all, all doing online schooling. And they have class chats with their teachers all in their homes, which if, if not for technology, everybody would have just been locked down in their homes doing nothing. But now the teacher sends them work. They do it. Teacher grades it back, sends them the scores. They have video chats and type chats. When they have questions, they type the question to the teacher. Teacher responds to that answer. You know, when they need to clarify something, they just know what to do. Teachers shares educational sites with them. They go to, to do some math projects and English projects or science projects, all from a desk in the house. You know, so, so these are things that can happen now, which didn't happen then. So I would say how technology has changed the way education goes. We have broader scope of what we can do and learn. We are not just limited by limited to what we have access to within our school. Now we have access to things across the world. We have access to, you know, people across the world. You know, even in the course of my work, I just type an email to somebody in a school somewhere and I want some information or some research tool that I feel will help my work. And in two days, I get an email back with all the information I want without having to travel, you know. And if I didn't have access to technology, I wouldn't have known those people. You know, so it's really expanded our access to knowledge. It's expanded our access to, to analytical tools. It's expanded our access to people, you know, that ordinarily would not have been able to get to. Yeah. So it, it's, it's, um, it, it is a lot better than what it was then. Yeah. 
Okay. Um, so if, if you were to advise young people, especially those, um, let me say, undergraduates specifically, mm -hmm. because we yeah. are focused majorly on um, how education, sorry, how technology could be used to advance education. So whether they are primary, they are secondary, or tertiary, anything mm -hmm. in between. So, yeah. so if you were to advise those in tertiary um, um, level undergraduates, mm -hmm. how best can they leverage technology? So for example, we know that um, with technology nowadays, you can do um, embark on remote internship, even as a student. So you, you mentioned research. So specifically, how would you advise them to leverage technology? As regards to them leaving school and be able to get a job as fast as possible. Because if you look at unemployment rates for fresh graduates, it's getting higher mm -hmm. every day. Higher every day. Employers mm -hmm. are saying, oh, they don't have the um, fresh graduates don't have the required skills. And the universities are trying, so to speak, doing their best. As an individual, mm -hmm. how best can they leverage technology to make sure that when they leave school, easier for them to get a job. Okay. Um, one of one of the things I have encouraged, because I get to mentor a lot of young people, and one of the things I encourage them to do is to stand out, right? And part of standing out means, or stems from the question, how can I make myself different? Now, you have the average undergraduate. So I'm thinking back at Nigeria. I'm thinking about schools in Nigeria. So you have a band of mechanical engineering students that have just graduated, right? First of all, the first question I want to ask is beyond what was taught by your lecturer, what else have you done to make yourself better and make yourself different, right? And technology is a mighty tool in achieving that. I know of students who, while trying to get their B farm or BSc or BA or B engine or MBBS, right, have used technology to acquire additional skills that have caused them to stand out from the others. You know, I've heard of people who, while studying accountancy in their school, have gotten some international certification yeah. on their laptops, wow. right? Which, without that opportunity, they, that without technology, they would not have been able to achieve that, right? I know people who have done some courses and certifications and even acquired additional degrees from the comfort of their rooms, right? Now, you mentioned remote internship, and that's one thing my company is trying to drive, because we realize that we would not say because of certain things going on now, everything must go to a standstill. So I, I know people who are interns currently in Nigeria for organizations outside Nigeria, you know, and so they run projects and things like that, you know, and, and you know, but the first thing I want to say, of, you know, just to prequel all this is that Technology can be a force for good and also for evil, right? So one of the first things every young adult, every young student should resolve in his mind is that I would use technology for good. You know, we need to clear that from the beginning, you know, and then, and then ask yourself, okay, how, what, are, what are the things I want to do and how will technology help me do them? You know, so, so my advice, again, in return to what I've just said to young people, is understand that technology is there to help you. One. We've talked about um, um, additional education, educational certifications and trainings. One, we've talked about communication and research. We've talked about, um, you've, talk, you've mentioned internship, right? Um, um, there are people who have, have um, so even, even in terms of employment, right? You know, conventionally we're, we're taught in Nigeria that, you know, you have an office, you go to a job, you know, I, I know people, and I'm sure you're aware, of people who currently, because of the way things have turned out now, you know, are fully working remotely. Fully working remotely. Sure. They, so so, so the, every young adult should realize that with technology, the opportunities are limitless. You know, they should realize that with technology, so let, let's go beyond the typical, okay, I have a big, big, big something, you know, from the university, or... I'm about to get to be something. This is the kind of, of opportunity I can have. No, those days are gone, right? Technology has opened the sphere to very many, if, if I were to sit down and begin to think, there are very many opportunities. One, there are people who run, I have a colleague, right? A pharmacist like me, 
but she runs an online cooking show. Is it an online cooking show? Runs, cooking show, yes. Wow. <laughs> yeah, in, Niger in Nigeria. And she's on Instagram, she's on Facebook, and she's watched all over the world <clears throat> from a kitchen in Lagos. <laughs> wow, in Lagos. amazing. Now that's an opportunity. Yeah, and, and that, that would have only been possible with technology. You know, I, I mean, the people who have shared bright ideas, you know, and have made themselves visible by virtue of what they've done with technology. You know, so, so it's, we're gone beyond anybody who still thinks technology is the typical, you do get a degree, you get a job in Ministry of XYZ or so and so company, and you sit down at a desk and punch it, you know, carry files. Those days are gone. <laughs> They're gone. You know, I was telling my wife recently, I, I don't remember when last I touched paper, work-related paper. You know, even signing, you sign on, you sign, you do digital signatures yeah. now. You know, so, I, you know, I don't get, my, my employment letter is, is that it came in an email. You know, it was in the past, they'll give it to you one big envelope, brown envelope. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> so they sent it to me, I signed, I mailed it back to them. You know, so, so yeah, so what I'm just driving at is this. The opportunities are wide. I, 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 don't, I don't want to just begin. We've talked about a few, and I'm sure we've mentioned those few just to stir up a thought. There's a lot more. And it all depends on how you think. The question is, first of all, how far do you want your imagination to go? At first, you want your imagination to go as a young undergraduate, as a young graduate. Technology is there to support you. There is a tool available, a technology available that would help that dream come true, right? Technology has broken the limits to what you can do as a young person, as a young adult, as a young student, as a young, as a young graduate, and as a career person, you know? So I know of people and cultures who believe technology is bad or technology is of the devil, you know, but, that is not the case. As with every other thing, they can be good, they can be bad, right? And we must learn and realize that with technology, we can excel beyond what we would have done without it. I, I, guess I, was, I was thinking recently, you know, particularly when we began this conversation, I was thinking that if I had technology the way we do now when I was doing my undergraduate work, I would have done a far more excellent work. I did a good job, I had a good grade, right? But I would have done, I, 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 I was going to think about opportunities, things I could have done with my project and my thesis and my, all those project presentations that if I had the technology we had today, I would have done it more. For instance, my colleagues who are in pharmacy school now do project defense with professors outside their, their, their school. So they all connect on Zoom and they do project defense. Wow. You know, things like that, which were not possible 20, 25 years ago. So your young adults, you're in a privileged time. You're in a time where you have the tools in your hand that do not cost so much, but can change your life seriously. So grab on it, leverage on it, have the dreams, and then find the technology to back you and help those dreams come true. They're very available. Very available. Yeah. Um, thank you very much, sir. So, as, 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 I don't know if there's anybody that watched this recording, I will not be inspired. Mm. Uh, wow. As you're speaking, yeah, I'm of the younger generation as well. <laughs> but I still feel like going. You're not young again. No? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but I still feel like going back to school and mm. use technology. And use some of this technology we now have. Okay, but um, yeah, we have passed that stage, and, and unfortunately, we cannot go back. So we just use it based on our realities now. And I, and I believe that um, those in school have so much enormous opportunity to use mm -hmm. technology for different things to earn money, mm -hmm. to learn better, to become mm -hmm. better among their peers. Yeah. So um, I cannot thank you enough for giving us this opportunity to act from your wealth of experience. Sir. We are really wow. Thank you very much. Thanks, Charles. I, I've, I'm really glad. I, I must say that I've, I've also followed you on LinkedIn. Not even, even before LinkedIn, right from Abuja, 
you know, I'd heard of the projects you were doing. I was one of those that observed you from afar, you know. <laughs> and incidentally, my wife has been following you closely for years. Wow. <laughs> and seriously, she has. You know, when I told her, oh, that child, you know, child, said, of course, child's mentor. Yes, I know him. I know him. I've been following him for, from, from Abuja, you know. And it's, it's in the years to come, you'd realize the impact of what you can do. Thank you very much, sir. You might, not, you might not see much of it now, but it's in the future when lives will be changed. And those people you're changing their lives today are in places of influence tomorrow. And they'll look back and as part of their story, they'll say, that was a man I met some years ago. His name is Charles and he changed my life. Thank you, sir. Right? Thank it's, you, sir. It's, it's, a, it's a noble thing you're doing. Thank you, sir. So oh, wait, yeah. if there is a need to continue this conversation anytime, please, I'll come back knocking. <laughs> sure, sure, <laughs> sure. <laughs> I'm glad. I'm very, I'm very, I'm very honored to, to be part of it. Yeah.